What did your parents do for a living? Um, my dad passed when I was young, but um, my mom, she just, you know, do what moms do. Find the best job she can. You know. And care to share uh, what she ended up doing? It's like, you know, restaurant industry. Nothing too crazy. Like waitressing, that sort of thing? Yeah. And then, um, like clothing stores, you know. Just working here and there. Like a sales associate, a manager? For sure. Uh, both or one or the other? Uh, she manages sometimes, some places. Your father, how did he pass, if you don't mind me asking? It was on some um, physical illness he was going through over time. It just got worse and passed away. Care to share what physical ailment? Um, my father has to pass from Crohn disease, and like the medication he was taking as he was growing up. That's actually something I got, but you know I'm trying to deal with it um by going vegan, you know, so I'm trying to get right, doing it the natural way. See, he he took steroids, and you know I can't really, I don't see myself doing that. What age were you when he passed? I was 11. And is this, this is something that you have, as you mentioned, is this something that is beatable? Is this something you can overcome? Yeah. I pretty much think anything is beatable. You just got to be able to work it out, you know? Yeah. Now, Shout out Dr. Uh, this was something that was passed down from your parents to you. You have your own children at this point. Yeah. Is it something any of your children have? Nah, all my children be. And when it came to vegan, are you fully vegan yourself? Yeah. And how long have you been fully vegan for? Probably about two years now. Well, almost two years, yeah. Okay. And for time reference, it's October. 2021 now. So it'd be two years in January. Now, you mentioned your mother. Uh, uh, you described what jobs your mother held. Did she want you to follow her footsteps or fields? No, no, no. See, I, I was like the middle child, but I was like the big, big brother. Big little brother, so I did what I had to do. You know, I was taking care of the bills, paying the bills at the age of 12 for my mama. And how were you doing that back then at 12? Uh, I was working. Just working. Legit. Uh, working a job at 12 years old? Yeah. For the newspaper. And back then, was that something you take upon yourself to do, or was that something you were asked to do? Oh, no, it's just something I had to. See, at the age of 12, I had big dreams. I had big goals, so I was like, in order for me to get it, I got to get it. So I went up and got to get it, and go get it. Prior to your father's passing, do you know what he did as far as a job description? Now in the mere, excuse me. Now in the American society, financially, how would you describe your upbringing? Um, next, well, next question. Okay. Hold on. Repeat that though. Okay. Uh, in the American society, financially, how would you describe your upbringing? Financially. So, for example, in the American society, people get placed in financial classes. Okay. Poor, 
lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class, rich. Okay. So when it comes to, I say by annually, I'm definitely like middle class when it comes to it. Was your household able to move up to a higher income group at some point, or did it just stay middle class for your upbringing? It's been about a steady pace. I'm pacing right now. I see them in here, so. Another level. Now, at 12 years old, your first job was doing what specifically with the newspaper? See, I was the kid I used to do um, door knocking. I used to knock doors. You know, from 12, I did it for about 10 years. So I would have knocked on probably like a million doors. I probably don't knock on your door. You might not even know. <laughs> and what, what does that mean specifically? Like you were trying to sell the newspaper or you were just delivering newspapers? Yeah, selling the newspaper. I could sell anything. And how were you introduced to that job? Can you say that again for me? How were you first introduced to that job at 12 years old? Um, I saw a flyer on the post. Called it. Me and my sisters and my brothers, we all went to work. And what was that like working that job there? Uh, it taught me how to be independent, and um, it just basically taught me a lot about life. Just growing up young, it, it teach you about like rejection and you know overcoming it and overcoming all type of obstacles. And what was the name of the company or newspaper you were working for back then? I work for the Temple, um, Temple Bay Times. And did you end up quitting or getting fired? Oh, no. Nah. You know, the newspaper old news, so that it just ended up, just faded away. Now, back then when you would knock on doors, uh, did you have any incidents? Oh, man, talking about, like, um... Them, 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 them white folk pulling out guns on you and all that crazy shit. Yeah, yeah. But, nah, not too many. That's about it. But you've had a gun pulled on you with this job at one point? Yeah. No, we in Florida and I'm black. And I used to go to work straight from school. And like I said, I used to be dripped down, polo down, probably with some goals, knocking on somebody's door white neighborhood and now looking you know, looking black. So it happens. Didn't have a Tampa Bay Times uniform or anything of that nature? Nah, we, we nah. We was in Florida so we it's too hot for all that. <laughs> now how many times did that actually happen? You getting a gun pulled on you? Mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. I forgot. A lot, though, like four, five, six, something, something like that. How would you deal with that? What was the protocol? I just, I, I understood, like, they still, most of them was old. And I had this one man come out with the gun yelling, like, hey, nigger, hey, nigger, get back. And at that time, Barack was our president. And I was just like, you don't even understand, like, our president black now. And he was just like, y'all don't belong here, get back, nigger, and all that, waving the gun. So I'm just like, yeah, bro, you, you still living in the past. And I just had to realize that, you know. So it ain't bother me. Now, I don't know if people still knock on doors or not. Uh, not 
selling newspaper, but uh, could be selling other products or maybe they have a door knocking job position of some sort. But anything you would say, generally speaking, because situations could be different for everybody, but let's say somebody's watching this and, and maybe they do have a door knocking job. Maybe they've never encountered uh, a gun being pulled on them. Maybe they've never encountered um, racism and things of that nature. Uh, but just having a door knocking job, anything you would say to somebody watching this right now? Look, if you out there knocking on them doors, if you let the littlest thing get to you, such as a no, a gun, slam the door in your face, if you let that get to you, you need to quit that job. Cause it ain't for you. Knocking doors, you gotta be in a good mood all day, every day. That's just how it is, for real. Now, you mentioned your sister. She did this job with you as well? Uh, yeah, a couple of my family members did. They ain't last, though. Uh, it, ain't work out for him. You me, I, I used to sell, so I'm, I was doing good, making money for real, and everybody else was kind of trying to figure it out still, so. What's the secret to door knocking and having that type of, I mean, if, if we take uh, newspapers out of it, but just a door-to-door -door salesman, what's the secret to that? What's the secret to gaining a sale? You gotta sell you, you gotta sell you. If people like you, they'll buy anything from you. Simple as that. Everybody what? like me, though. So, just look at me. Whenever you would sell door to door, would you ever lie? Of course. <laughs> but not to the point where you can. Oh, shit, I used to lie. Hell yeah, I lied. Hell yeah. Ever felt guilty about it? Ever felt bad about it? I don't know, shit. Maybe until I got paid. And I, was, I forgot about it after that. <laughs> Ever had customers complain about that? Hey, so-and-so told me this, and it's not what it was going to be. And Yeah, but I, I've learned how to um, grow up. So I used to do it like in the past when I was younger, but yeah. You definitely, it come back, you know, karma, karma the motherfucker. When it came to the word no, was that something, was that skill of dealing with the word no something that uh, you dealt with early, you mastered early on, or did that take some time to deal with? Oh, yeah, it definitely took time, but um, I mastered it early on because I just get, kept getting tired of hearing it. Is there a secret to dealing with the word no? Ask again. Is there a secret to dealing with the word no? <laughs> that is the secret. Ask again. <laughs> oh. Well, you keep asking, the more somebody end up changing their answer. And... What do you think got you to be successful when other family members of yours tried and attempted this job but weren't as successful as you? Um, I just know how to be myself. That's about it. And again, people got to like you for who you are. Now, aside from the... Uh, door-to-door -door salesman job. Any other jobs you had growing up? What did that resume look like? And if you could go in order, that would be... So I went from knocking those to Foot Locker. I applied at like 20 McDonald's, but Got hired like every time, but I never showed up to work. Like, nah, 
I ain't working no fast food place. I can't do it. But I don't build pools. <laughs> I run work that um red lobster. I would guard a whole lot of places. But yeah. Uh, what is the name of the pool company? It was like a little off-brand company, so I don't even remember the name of it. Okay, so Tampa Bay Times, Foot Locker, McDonald's about 20 times. No, I ain't work at McDonald's. I applied, but I ain't never worked, though. I ain't never worked no fast food places. You applied, would get hired, but just never ended up furthering with it. Never. Why 20 times, though? I don't know. I just was bored. I ain't gonna cap. I was just bored with myself. And what was it about fast food that was not for you? I made enough money. I worked too hard. I ain't making no money. Okay, so Red Lobster, Olive Garden, anything else? You did for a job? Mm. I always went back to knocking on doors. So out of all these jobs, the Tampa Bay Times job was the one that you did the most of, or mainly. You um, did do that for about 10 years. Well, yeah, mostly, yeah. Now, when you would do the Tampa Bay Times and you would be a door-to-door -door salesman, were you full-time with it for 10 years? Or, I mean, you did it for a little bit, then stopped, and then did it for a little bit, then stopped. Like, how did that work? Um, I say the most time I probably had off was like a year. But weekly, like only five days a week, four hours a day, nothing crazy. Work about 20 hours a week, making about four racks a month as a high school student. Four racks a month just off of the Tampa Bay Times gig. Yeah, that was, that's when I was young. Yeah. And all these jobs that you had... Um, Foot Locker, Building Pools, Red Lobster, Olive Garden, was that all in Tampa? Most of them. What wasn't? Um, I worked in Atlanta. I had a Red Lobster. Okay. And what was the order? I know you did Tampa Bay Times for 10 years, but was it Foot Locker, then Building Pools, then Olive Garden, then Red Lobster? Yeah. Okay. And in between, like, um, Pools and Olive Garden, I went back to a different company for the newspaper, newspaper company. So it wasn't just the Tampa Bay Times? Oh, no, no, no. Throughout that time, I was in different cities all around Florida. I probably knocked every city in Florida. Yeah. So a different newspaper every city. How many newspapers, companies, do you think you've done in that span of 10 years? Probably about 20, 20 different ones. All the way from Seattle to Myrtle Beach to Houston, to all over. That's why I say I'm probably not throwing your everybody though probably watching it. <laughs> now, we've been establishing a timeline here. I just want to get a little bit more details on some of the other jobs that you had. Uh, what was your position at Foot Locker? Let's ask some other questions. Okay. Yeah, let's 
that's the only topic we got finished right now? Well, that's a topic that I wanted to dive into, but we don't have to if you don't want to. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, is it in, how's it going? So that would, what, what topic we should talk about to finish it off real quick? Is it going, that topic good right there? Yeah. All right, my bad. All right, you can re ask me. Foot Locker, what was your position there? Selling shoes. <laughs> and what was it really like working at Foot Locker? It was cool, but nothing was better than, than gambling, though. When I was, you know, leave work, that's the place I'm going every time. You know, the casino, probably five minutes up the street. Put my check every other day. But I ain't gonna tell, I ain't gonna count though. Take a lot of losses though. For real. More when, wins than losses though, for sure. When it comes to gambling, uh, what was the most you ever won at one time? Um believe it or not, it was only about like eight bands. Like the most at one time. I actually used that eight bands to come to Atlanta. So I'm here now. And what did you go ahead, What did you win eight bands on, exactly? I hit the Royal Flush. I hit eight bands. I walked in that. I walked in that bit with forty dollars. I walked in that bit with forty dollars. Hit the Royal Flush. Left out that bit eight bands. It took me about ten minutes. And this was a casino. The Derby Lane. Ha <laughs> ha. Track 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 house. You walk in with forty dollars. You leave with eight bands. How long did it take you? Ten minutes. About ten minutes. In and out. Now, what was your biggest loss? That was your biggest uh, gain at one time. What was your biggest loss at one time? Most you ever, most amount of money you ever lost at one time. Like eight hundred dollars. Off of what? Blackjack. Yeah, I don't really be taking losses like that. And that was also at a casino? Yeah, that was, yeah, blackjack. I was at the Hard Rock. I don't lost 800 a couple times, but I won, I won thousands a lot of times, so, yeah. When you did lose 800 a couple times, that was all at that Hard Rock or various casinos? Nah, different casinos. Every time I'm in the city with a casino, I'm at, I'm at that bit. You might see me at that bit. Now, how long have you been gambling for? Uh, about 14 years now. Yeah. And what age did it start for you? Started gambling probably like around 12. And what was the first game you played? Tom. Popped a lot of niggas in town. Now, when it comes to, I asked you individually, the most you ever won, the most you ever lost at one time. But overall speaking, in 14 years of gambling, <laughs> have you won more overall or lost more overall speaking? So 14 years, I probably, I probably don't want like like hundred fifty thousand, and probably don't lost probably like fifty thousand. So I'm probably up like a hundred. And when you say um, you're up a hundred and you've been playing for 14 years. Was it mostly, um, well, I'm gonna save, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rephrase that question. In 14 years, being up a hundred, what do you think most of that was from? What type of game do you think that was? Oh, um, most of it came from Tunk, like from like 12 to like 21, yeah, that definitely Tunk, but then, nah, 
I say blackjack party I'm caught up from the little couple couple years since I've been 21 yeah but that's about it I really just be playing blackjack but I actually just learned how to play roulette and I'm getting fired that bit. I haven't actually lost in roulette yet. So, yeah. When it comes to gambling, are you addicted to it? I'm very addicted to gambling. I will admit that, yes. But I know I control it though. I sound like I did. I <laughs> When it comes to, and I just want to detail a little bit of these jobs a little bit further. When it comes to Foot Locker, how much time did you end up working at Foot Locker for? Probably worked for like, only for like two months. I started um, selling all their shoes without putting them through the register, so they fired me. <laughs> Told you I could sell anything. Would uh, how would it work when it would come to like exclusive releases? I don't want to say exclusive releases. Let me rephrase that. How would it how would it work when it came to the big releases, like a very popular shoe people wanted that sort of thing? Um, like let's say a you gotta have a raffle ticket. They you raffle tickets, but how you you know can play the system? They put all the shoes in the back. All employees be in the back. I don't figure it out though. The managers be the ones selling all the shoes. They be having their own little section of the do not touch these section. And now everybody else, all the raffle section will be in this little corner. And yeah, you just gotta get a ticket. Once them tickets gone, what's ever left, yeah, they sell on the store. So you worked at Foot Locker during the raffle ticket days. Oh yeah, raffle ticket days. There was a time when, uh, I, I believe there was a time before the raffle ticket system was implemented and it was just a, okay, the shoes drop at this time in that day and there would be a line of people waiting for waiting to enter and yeah. get their size and their shoe yeah. and things of that nature. Yeah, they start the line. Too many people kept dying. Now, what about when it came to building pools? Uh, was that your, what was your actual position? Um, shit, building that bit, laying down the concrete, breaking down the concrete. I had cleaned the pools. And what was that really like working that job? That shit was dope. I like that shit. I actually want to build my own pool. What was it about that job that you enjoyed? Uh, see, I really like I really like physical stuff. I like being a man, you know. I play sports and and I just like getting 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 my hands dirty. And how much time do you end up working at that gig for? Rough estimate. Like six months, probably. Not too long. Quit or get fired? Oh, I quit. I quit a lot of jobs because when I ain't making my own money, I can't control my own money, jobs don't pay enough for me. And uh, I got to go back to knocking on doors. We're wrapping up here, but I do want to detail these last two jobs you had. Uh, what was your position at Olive Garden? No, the funny part is, like, when I worked at Olive Garden, I got, like, three raises my first month. Because I be putting in work, you know? Then I quit there, because, again, I felt like they weren't paying me enough. Then I worked at Red Lobster. And they made me a manager. You believe that? Manager. All my tattoos. I was telling everybody what to do. <laughs> How long did it take for you to become manager? Like two months. What did you start off as, position-wise, at Red Lobster? A server. <laughs> 
<laughs> and how were you able to become manager in that amount of time? Because I was the top server. I was the top server, everybody coming to Red Lobster to see me. Was that something you were striving to get? Were you striving to become manager? Hell or nah. Okay. Hell no. Nah. I ain't care no, nothing about the job. I was manager for like two weeks and quit. I walked out during my manager shift. They fuck that shit. At Olive Garden, did you state in this interview what position you were exactly? We talked about it briefly, but I don't know if you actually said what position you were at Olive Garden. I think you mentioned you had gotten three oh, was, raises, but you didn't say uh, what yeah. you were. I was um, I was actually a dishwasher. Believe that. Now, what was it really like working at Olive Garden? Ooh, that was too tough. Don't ever wash no dishes. But I tell you, fuck that shit. That shit too hard. Too much work. Now... How would you compare the toughness of that and the work that entailed versus building pools, laying down concrete, breaking concrete, as you described? You didn't say anything. You didn't describe it as tough at all. It's but all... when we talked about dishwashing, you mentioned how tough that was. <laughs> See, I got this thing with dishwashing, right? First of all, don't call me biased or nothing, but I feel like that's a female job definitely just like cooking and stuff you feel me i don't feel like man it's probably cooking and doing dishes you know so that's why i feel like it's a tough job because it's doing something that i really just don't want to do but now i can build pools all day <laughs> why do you feel like it's a female's job because your hand got to be in the water all day then they get wrinkly and I don't like my hands to be wet all day. And at Red Lobster, what was it really like working there? It's cool. You no, know, it's crazy because in Atlanta at Red Lobster, a lot of celebrities come down. I met like 10 celebrities in like that little short time. Care to share who you met? I can remember, oh, I met like Neo, T-Pain, Anne-Marie, uh, QC, from, I'm, um, I met P from QC, um, Y fan, Lucy, Free Lou, Free Six Fifty. Um, lot of people and you would actually uh, were you serving or managing when it came to these celebrities that you mentioned uh i mean it happened at different various times so some moments i was serving some moments i was managing like when p came i, I shit this whole meal was on me i was managing that day And who actually did you serve at that job, uh, those celebrities? Uh, Lucian, my fan Lucian. And I gave his ass some gas. And uh, how was he as a customer? Oh, he was cool. 